This week's Sign API is Maxim Analog Devices. Lady Ada, what is your new product introduction? Brought to you by DigiKey this week. All right, this week's IMPI is the Max 31329, a low current real time clock chip. Um, as shown here, it's a, a 10 pin TDFN chip. Um, so it's pretty easy to use in your surface mount project. It's a five by five millimeter chip. Uh, and it's got a lot of cool things going on in it. I'm always looking at real-time clocks, and so um, there's a bunch of stuff in this NPI that caught my eye. Um, this is the chip, so it was originally, I think, designed a Maxim, and then Maxim was recently uh, acquired by ADI, and so um, that's why it's got Max in the part number, ADI on the uh, data sheet. Um, so this is a real-time clock. Um, a lot of people use these. You've got a, a product where um, you know power may be lost, but you still want to be able to keep time um, and do so in a very low power way. Um, you know, initially, um, you know, this is what real time clocks used to look like. They'd have a battery built in, they have the chip built in, um, and they had a crystal as well. And this was used on, like, say, a computer or a motherboard, uh, so that even when power was lost, um, the computer would keep time, which is which is great. This is what, actually what I didn't like about VCRs as a kid is. You, know, you lose power and um, it loses time as well. You should have had a real-time clock inside of them. I think nowadays DVD players, uh, they'd add a real-time clock. It's a little bit more expensive, um, but basically lets the product keep time, um, again, when battery's low or power's out. So like if you have a device that's off for a very, very long time, um, you know, and the internal real-time clock battery also dies, that's when it's like, hey, I don't even, I think it's like 1970 and it's noon. Um, so this is like, um, you know, real-time clock, the way, you know, we carry them uh, and have a breakout for it. This is the DS1307, it's a classic real-time clock. Uh, so the chip itself is in the middle, that's the DS1307. And then uh, the rectangular thing is the crystal. There's a 32 kilohertz crystal that's used to keep time. And then a battery. Um, so, you know, the real-time clocks tend to use less than a microamp, which means that um, they can really sip a battery. A, a, even a small coin cell can last years or even a decade. Um, so, you know, no matter what happens, no, no matter how long the product is depowered, um, it'll always know what time it is when it wakes up. Uh, so that's the old style RTC. So this is the Maxim uh, 31329. So one thing that I thought was very cool about it is first off, it's got the crystal built in um, to see the oscillator inside with a little X1, X2 kind of in the top middle. Um, you know, there's a, there's a couple implications for it, but one is you don't have to pay for a separate crystal, which is usually 20 to 50 cents. Um, and second, uh, you can get more accuracy, which we'll talk about um, because it can be tuned uh, with the loading capacitors. Usually you, 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 the loading capacitors are specified for the crystal, um, but you don't really know what it's going to be until, um, you know, there's always a little bit of variation, but with this, uh, it's internal. Um, but uh, it's very similar to a lot of RTCs. It runs off of I squared C. Uh, there's an optional clock input. You can see D in, which is, which is quite nice. Um, there's two interrupt outputs, um, into A, into B, uh, clock out, clock in. Oh, sorry, data in is for, um, is not the clock in. Uh, data in is for uh, interrupt support in, into the device to like wake it up. And then um, VBAT is the secondary power. So some RTCs don't have a secondary power supply. You know, there's the main supply um, VCC, which is usually, you know, power or wall or, you know, 3.3 volts from the main system. Um, and then VBAT is the secondary uh, lower power power supply for when power is cut out. Um, again, some power, some RTCs don't have two power pins um, and they make you have to manage that on your own. I like that in this case, um, it can auto detect and switch over to the battery when main power is lost. So that's, that's the first basic thing. Um, uh, second off, it's, it's again pretty small. Uh, it's not a big SOIC or a TSOP. It's a nice TDFN chip. Um, all the pins are used. Um, you know, it's very, it, it's very convenient, especially since the crystal's built in, um, only five by five uh, millimeters. Um, so two of the things that uh, really, I think, f feature quite well on this RTC. One is um, the battery management and the battery life. So this is a low power RTC, it uses 240 nano amperes. Um, and that is about half of what most RTCs 
use. I think I, the DS1307 I looked up and it's about 500 nanoampere. So great, you know, it'll last twice as long the battery. Um, there's also a trickle charger uh, that can charge an external super cap or if you have a re rechargeable battery. Um, I thought the super cap, especially since it uses half as much current, um, a super capacitor, uh, which looks like this, it looks like a coin cell, but it's actually like a 0.07 or 0.2 um, farad capacitor. Um, they're, you know, it's basically like a, a battery, right? But you can charge it very easily and discharge it. And um, by using the Maxim super cap calculator, you can see that even, um, you know, I think in this case, a uh, two millifarad uh, super cap running at the 240 nanoampere's typical current will last you, I think it says like 60 or so hours. So, um, you know, you can, or, you know, a couple days worth. So if you think that your power is not going to be out for more than a couple hours at a time, um, then you can use a super cap. It means you don't have to deal with the lithium battery, which is always like shipping management gets more complicated because you have to label it as containing a lithium battery. Um, you can't recharge a lithium battery. Um, and the super cap, of course, it'll automatically recharge instantly the moment um, the main power gets turned back on. So I thought that was nice, you know, especially with the, the lower uh, quiescent current, uh, timekeeping current, it makes more sense. There's also, um, you know, the built-in trickle charging circuit. You can see here um, how it's hooked up. You can select which resistor to trickle charge through. And they even put in the shock key diode. How handy is that? So it's very... Very inclusive, really, if you, if all you need is the super cap on the VBAT pin and you're ready to go. Uh, the second nice thing about this is, oh, um, if you, well, it won't show up, but um, this is the DS3231. Um, and this is the um, high, extremely accurate, um, temperature compensated crystal uh, real-time clock that we carry. And these are like, this is kind of the highest end, most precise real-time clock you can get plus or minus uh, two PPM for um, room temperature-ish. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's really big, uh, it's, a, it's a big RTC, so definitely not like you could put it in a wearable or anything. Um, it's, it's a chonker, uh, it's, I think it's 16 SOIC. And um, it's got the crystal and then a temperature sensor to do um, a temperature compensation. Whereas um, what's nice about, here we go, there, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, What's nice about um, this, um, the Max 3139, sorry, I wanna get the right part number and there's a lot of threes. Max 31329 is that if you see at the bottom um, below, you know, benefits and features at the bottom, integrate crystal load capacitors tuned to plus or minus five PPM. So compared to the DS3231, it's, it's not gonna be 2.5 or three, it's gonna be five PPM. Um, so not as precise, you know, but given the fact that it isn't temperature compensated and the price is significantly better, like you're, you have to pay quite a bit to get the temperature compensated um, RTCs, you, you know, the internal crystal and the load capacitors that are tuned and trimmed at the factory mean that you're going to have much better clock accuracy than um, your typical RTC where you have an external crystal. Um, usually the crystals are, you know, plus minus 20 ppm. So you'll get like, you know, four times better accuracy. Um, with, and also you don't have to purchase that component separately. Um, so yeah, so you can also pick up an eval board. Um, it looks like an Arduino shield compatible that also comes with a dev board, um, a Maxim microcontroller dev board if you'd like, um, but you can remove that and just plug it in. Again, it's I squared C, so you know, use wire or use whatever, you know, a lot of dev boards have Arduino pinouts on them. Um, you just use I squared C, follow the register map, and you can set the alarm, set the times, all the good stuff that you expect from an RTC, um, and also take advantage of the extremely small size, uh, full integration, high accuracy, and low power. Available DigiKey, and it's in stock. It's actually not in, in, it's stock, not in stock, but it will be in stock. I'll, I'll edit that in post. Sorry, it's, um, yeah, this was so good, I didn't want to pass it up. It's going to be in stock in a couple of weeks. The eval board Sorry. is in stock. Um, but this the, really is new, NPI. I know. This is so new, you can't get it yet. This but, is but, the, it, but it's not like it's not like the other things that you can't get. This is this is coming. This is soon. this is actually going to coming. It's going to be right. in the stock in like I think two or three weeks. So I actually have some on order um, that I'm going to get. Eye on the horizon. Look, it's a chip shortage uh, time, yeah. but I still want to celebrate these good chips. I think this one's worth waiting for. Okay, and that's NPI.
Thank you.